just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna thank you, cause everything you made is so and girls how are you doing teacher Michelle here so good to be back with you it's been I know it's been maybe a little over a month um, since 
I've been able to teach you again and I am so excited. I really hope you are all having um, a wonderful Sunday and um, you're reading your Bible and you're just so excited about what you've been learning about our friend who? Our friend Moses. Oh my goodness, I love Moses. I love the story of Moses. It's just so um, exciting and it makes you cry and it makes you scared sometimes just at what was happening to the Israelites, right? And how Moses had to step up. So, um, but before we go into that, let's pray, okay? Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that we can um, join each other on Bible study, Lord, on um, Facebook and, and on Zoom, Lord God. We thank you for that. And we just ask that you would be with us now, Lord, as we learn your word and we learn everything that you want us to learn from um, your truth, Heavenly Father. We love you and we thank you. Amen. Amen. So boys and girls, so far we've been learning about Pharaoh and about Moses, right? Do you remember Moses? What was Moses? What was the big thing um, when Moses was first born? Was Moses safe when he was a baby? We learned no, right? We learned that um, all the Israelite boys were being killed. Do you remember that? So what happened? Just remember his mama and his sister? Remember they made the basket? Um, they made it and put him down the put him down the river. Do you remember that? And then do you remember Pharaoh's daughter found him, brought him into the into the um, palace, and he grew up in royalty. He grew up with all the yummy food. He grew up with all the nice clothes and all the jewelry and the he rode the best horses and um, you know was with uh, rubbed shoulders with all the popular people, right? But then what happened? Moses started feeling that there was more to his life. There was something he should have been doing. Do you remember? Because remember, he was raised Hebrew. He was raised in the ways of the Lord. Remember? Remember the miracle that his mama got to take care of him for the, for the princess? Do you remember that? Remember Pharaoh's daughter um, couldn't take care of the baby too much. She couldn't feed the baby. So remember Pharaoh... Um, Moses' mama got to take care of him up until, and all that time, she was she would be feeding him and be whispering, Yahweh is God. God is your Lord. And she was probably instilling, saying, Moses, you have a purpose. There is a reason why you were born, Moses, and why you were spared. Because the crocodiles could have eaten that basket, and it could have been really bad for Moses, right? But God had his hand upon Moses. So that's what we're going to learn. So boys and girls, today we're going to learn about Moses, okay? We're going to learn how God called Moses. Now, now God didn't, God did not, hey Moses, like that's how we call our friends. We call our mom and dad, mom, dad, can I have some water? Like that's how we call our family, right? That's not what the Bible says, how God called Moses. So God called Moses in the Bible. Do you remember Moses was taking care of his, remember Moses got married. And do you remember Moses' father-in-law, he was taking care of the sheep, right? And one day Moses was out there taking care of the sheep. And then all of a sudden, Moses was out there and all of a sudden he says, oh my goodness, there was a burning bush. There was a bush like, um, like, you know, like a, a plant, a plant that was burning. But you know what the Bible says? The Bible says it was on fire, but it wasn't burning. It was just a fiery bush. So there was really no smoke, no nothing. And so what it says, so what usually happens when wood is on fire, boys and girls, like when you go camping or, um, you know, you try to build a fire with the Boy Scouts, you usually bring smoke, right? And then whatever you light on fire, it burns away and then it turns to ash, right? Yes. Well, this is not what happened to the bush. So it says here, um, it said here, so Moses decided he was going to go and investigate that strange bush. So he was like, what is, what is going on with that bush right there? Why isn't it burning up? Where's the smoke, right? So it says here, what do you think was making the burning bush do this? 
Was it a special kind of wood? Was it a special kind? Well, they didn't have matches in those in those days, but maybe a special kind of kindling? Or did someone rub two rocks together to bring a spark? No. What it says here is that it was God. That God was in that burning bush, boys and girls. Boys and girls, do you know that God is just almighty? That he does sometimes, he does things that make me, even me, I'm scratching my head like, God, why did you do that? Wow, I would have never thought about that. And God is just because he's God and he does things the way he wants to do them. And he does things so special and so amazing, boys and girls. And as you grow up and you get older, you're going to start to see it as you follow the ways of the Lord to see how God is just going to blow your mind and blow you away. Just like he did with, with our brother Moses, our friend Moses. Okay. So then it says here, um, when God saw that Moses came closer to the bush, he spoke Moses, calling his name, Moses, Moses. And Moses heard God. I sound scary, but I'm sure God did not sound scary. <laughs> but it's okay. So do you see God calling Moses? You see how Moses, just, uh, Moses knew that that was God's voice. So look at boys and girls. Can you see Moses bowing down immediately? And he took off his sandals. Okay. It says here. And Moses said, here am I, God. Here am I. I hear you, God. I'm here. Moses is here. Okay. Then God told Moses to remove his sandals because where he was standing was holy ground. Okay, so now back in the time of Moses, in the Bible times, when you took off your sandals, you took off your chanclas, that was a sign of, of, of respect. Like you never went into someone's house with your shoes on because they were dirty and dusty and just gross, full of germs. Okay, so Moses took off his sandals. So God explained to Moses God says, Moses, I'm going to tell you why I need to talk to you. Okay. Has your mom and dad ever called you in the next room? You know, sometimes I do that with my boys. I said, no, Nehemiah, I need to see you in the kitchen. And sometimes they're playing their video games or they're watching TV or they're reading, they're doing homework and they come in there. What mama, what do you, what do you, what do you need? And I have to tell them, well, I kind of noticed the trash is overflowing and, and, you know, I kind of asked you maybe 30 minutes ago to throw out the trash and none of you boys did it. So they usually know when I call them more than once, it's because it's something I need for them to do. So they kind of walk down the stairs a little slow, right? But if I were to say, hey boys, dinner's ready, boy, boom, 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 boom. I would hear them pretty much sliding down the stairwell, right, to have that dinner. So that's what happened. Um, God was beginning to explain to Moses why, why he lit the bush and why he was calling him. Okay. So it says here, God heard the cry of the Israelite people. Okay. That those are the people. And he knew that they were being treated. Remember Pharaoh was treating the Israelite people so mean and whipping them and beating them and, and just making them do such hard work. Even children had to do that horrible work of a grown man. And God was listening to them. When they cried, when they screamed, everything that they were going through, God knew. Okay? And boys and girls always know that God hears your prayers. Anything you're going through, anything your mommy and daddy are going through, your grandpa and grandma, your aunties, your uncles, your brothers and sisters, your friends at church, God knows. Never stop praying for them, okay? God hears them and he hears you. Just like he heard Moses, okay? So now it was time to set them free. Woo! You know what? To Moses, you know what? That's like when you're getting ready to go on that roller coaster and you get butterflies and you that, that bar comes down, click, click, and you know you're ready to go on a fun ride on that roller coaster. Well, Moses was about to go on that roller coaster. So that's what God is saying. God is saying, Moses, it is time to set your people free. My people. It's time to it's time to go let Pharaoh have it. Yeah, Pharaoh Pharaoh deserved it. <laughs> he was a bad man. He was a bad man. He was a bad man. Shame on him. 
Okay, so it says here, so God was going to send Moses to tell Pharaoh for the king to let the Israelite people go. It was time. God was done. God was done with that. Okay, so how many of you think that this was going to be an easy job? Do you think Moses was like, yes, finally, woohoo, I get to go confront Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the world right now? No, that's like someone telling us to go like, I don't know, to the president and demand something. You know, if we see something wrong that they're doing to tell them to stop, I would kind of be afraid. But if God told me to do it, I'm going to do it because that means he's going to give you the equipment to, to do it. OK, so. So then it says here, how many of you think Pharaoh would just say, oh, sure, here, here you go. Here's the key. Here you go. Here are the keys. Go ahead and get them out. Go ahead and unlock them. Unlock them out of their shackles. Sure, I'll open up the gate for you. I'll give you anything you need. No way. Pharaoh was about to make this very difficult for Moses, but God knew. So God was getting Moses ready. Okay. So Moses knew Pharaoh wouldn't just let the Israelites go. This was going to be a scary job. Moses would have to stand up to Pharaoh. So Moses, okay, Moses was praying. And as he was praying, he was receiving power from God. God was telling him what to do. God was giving him instruction, okay? And boys and girls, whenever God tells us to do something, he will always give instruction, okay? Moses wasn't too sure about this plan. I don't know, God. I don't, I don't really know, you know, if, if, I, if I'm the man. I, I don't know. Really? Me? Okay. He didn't feel like he was the right man for the job. He was afraid. And, and God, and he told God about his worries. First, Moses knew he would have to prove to the Israelites that it was really God who sent him. So he asked what he should say when the Israelites wanted to know God's name. Okay, so let's get out our Bibles, boys and girls. Let's get our Bibles and let's turn to Exodus 3.14. In Exodus 3.14, and God said to Moses, you tell them when they ask who I am, you say, I am that I am. Thus, you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Okay, so that's what God is saying. God's name is I am that I am. Anything we need for God to be in our lives, he is. Okay? So that's what he's saying. I am that I am. God told Moses to tell the people that God's name is I am. That's an interesting name. That means that God is eternal. God has always been. God doesn't have parents. God just always was. I know that's kind of, when I was a little girl, that used to like, my mind used to do flip-flops because I'm like, but mommy and daddy, well, who, who, who was God's parents? And my dad would just say, God always was. But how did God, how was he born? God wasn't born. God always was. And I'd be like, okay, I'm going to bed. And then I'd go to bed. I'm like, I couldn't, it was too exhausting for me. So do you remember, remember the first sign that God gave to Moses to show the Israelites the Lord's power? Do you remember that? Do you remember when he turned, he turned Moses's rod, his staff into a snake? Do you remember that? And then do you remember the leprosy and healing when they have the skin problem, right? And then Moses put up his hand and he was completely healed. Okay. And then do you remember when he turned to water into blood? Water in, into blood. Boys and girls, only God can do that, right? Only God. So that's what he's saying here. So that sign should have gotten the Israelites' attention because the snake sure did scare our friend Moses. That would scare me. Okay. No one knew how to cure the leprosy. Remember with his hand, his hand turned white or what caused it. But God made the leprosy appear on Moses' hand and then God healed it. Moses obeyed the call. Finally, Moses. Okay, God. Okay, I'll do it. God, I don't feel, I, I'm scared, God. I I can't talk well. I don't know what to say. They're going to laugh at me, God. Why me? Okay. Finally, God calmed Moses down. And now Moses knows that he can do it. So raise your hands if you think Moses obeyed God at this point. I think he did. 
okay. So at first Moses let his fear get in the way of him being obedient, but then finally he obeyed God, packed up his wife and his two sons, and started back to Egypt. Okay, then just as God promised, Aaron came to meet Moses, that's his brother, on the way, and they went from Israelite leaders to show them the signs from God and to tell them that God promised to rescue them from slavery. The Israelites believed and worshiped God. They were so glad to hear that God cared about them and would soon rescue them. Okay, so basically Moses heard from God, okay, but he was still scared, okay? He was still scared, but God reminded him. Remember when I turned the rod into a snake? Do you remember when I put leprosy on your hands, but then I, I healed it? A few seconds later, do you remember when I turned water in, into blood, Moses? Don't you remember? So that's what God is saying. God is letting them know. God is telling them that even though you're afraid, Moses, and even though this is something you've never done, Moses, I am going to be with you. I am going to be with you. What does the Bible say? Fear not. Fear not, for I am with you. I, right? That's what God, fear not. The Lord says that all throughout the Bible. Fear not. That means don't be afraid. Okay, so our memory verse and the verse for today is <clears throat> Exodus 3, 14. And God said to Moses, let's say it together, boys and girls. I am who I am. Okay. Let's say it again. And God said to Moses, I am who I am. Okay? And also Yahweh. That was that's another that's another word. Hebrew for God is Yahweh. Yahweh is God. I am who I am. Okay, boys and girls, and I just want you to be encouraged and I want you boys and girls when the Lord speaks to you like he spoke to Moses in the burning bush, I want you to say, here I am, God, speak to me. I'm ready. I'm listening. Don't be afraid, boys and girls, okay? Don't ever be afraid when God asks you to do something because sometimes God is going to ask you to, to, um, to go sit by that person at the park that little girl at the park that doesn't have any friends, you know, or maybe somebody that doesn't have any food to share what you have, okay? Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed, okay? Or maybe when you're at a family party to go sit by your grandma and grandpa and just tell them how much Jesus loves them, okay? Boys and girls, I am so excited for you to continue for us to learn about Moses and the adventure that he's about to go on because remember... That bar came down, click, click, and Moses chick, 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 is going up that roller coaster track to the greatest adventure he has ever known in his life. So many amazing things are about to happen to our friend Moses and to the Israelite people. And boys and girls, read your Bible. It is full of adventure. It's full of amazing real life stories. And I don't know about you, but I'm so excited to meet Moses when we go to heaven. I am so excited to meet Moses and just ask him, how did you feel when this happened and when this happened? I'm just so excited. I'm excited to just meet all the Bible characters. I'm so excited. So boys and girls, read your Bible, continue to pray, obey your mommy and daddy, and let's keep our eyes open to see, to see God, our ears open to hear when he calls us. And let's make sure that our ears are extra open to hear that trumpet sound. Because that trumpet sound means what? Who is coming back? Jesus. Jesus. Okay? We want to be ready, boys and girls. We want to be doing good things, things that are pleasing to Jesus. Okay? God bless you. And Teacher Michelle loves you. And... We will see you on Sunday morning. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you, Lord, that 
Jesus, we're going to go on this exciting adventure, Lord, with our brother Moses and just to see what you're going to do through his life, Lord God, and how you're going to do so many more miracles in these next few months. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Be with us. Be with our mommies and daddies. Be with our brothers and sisters, our grandpa and grandmas, our aunties and uncles. And be with our teachers, Lord. Just continue to be with them. We love you and we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye, boys and girls. And like always, teacher Michelle loves you. Bye.